Now let's start working on compound inequalities. Starting with the first example, x is smaller than 8, and, very important word, x is greater or equal to 3. So what we're going to need to do is essentially draw three number lines on top of each other, like this. The first number line, we're going to take a look at x is smaller than 8. So put the 8 over here and note that it's an open dot. Why is it an open dot? Because x is smaller than 8 but not including 8. So, okay, x is smaller than 8 so we can shade the area or just highlight it to the left of 8. Because x can be anything smaller, like 7, 0, negative 10, whatever. And x is greater or equal to 3. So what I'll do is now graph this over here on the second line. So put in the 3. That's going to be a closed dot. Why is it a closed dot? Because we're including it. x is greater or equal to 3. So over here I can highlight this area. And now for the last line, this is actually going to represent the solution set. And something that we really need to pay attention to is this word, in this case, and. When we have and instead of or, we're going to look for the intersection between the two lines. So whatever they have in common. So what do they have in common in this case? We have highlighted this area in common for both of them. So I'm going to highlight the 3 as well because that's included. The 8 won't be included because it's not being included for the first line. And the solution set will be just between 3 and 8. So essentially the solution set would be x is in between 3 and 8, including the 3, but not the 8. Okay, what about or? Hopefully this made sense. If not, please follow more examples. Then it will make sense. Now we have x is smaller than 8. So let's graph that. So we have the 8 again. So a line just like this one. We highlight the area to the left of the 8. Then we can graph the x is greater or equal to 3, identical to over what we had over here. And now the solution set, instead of and, the only difference between these two is that we have the word or instead. And when we're considering or, that's going to be different. We're actually going to combine the two solutions. So everything that is included over here and everything that is included over there will be part of the answer. So in this case, taking a look over here, we're going all the way up to 8. But in the second, being x is greater or equal to 3, the second line here, or the second uh, graph that we have, we have everything greater than 3. So everything is essentially included for x is smaller than 8 or x is greater or equal to 3. So the answer in this case is all real numbers. And I will write it like this, x pertains to, this means pertains, it looks like an e, right? But it's a symbol for the word pertains to all real numbers, which just means x is in the set of all real numbers. Okay, so let's do one more for each, starting with x is smaller or equal to negative 2. Or 
x is greater than 4. So let's start with this one. x is smaller or equal to negative 2. I have a closed dot here. It's filled in because we're including the negative 2 as a solution. And x is smaller than that. So we're going to highlight the area to the left of it. And x, rather, or x is greater than 4. So we won't fill in this little circle. And x is greater than, so we're going to highlight the area to the right of 4. Okay, so what is the solution set for the composite, for the, for the compound inequality? Well, I'm going to bring down the negative 2 over here and the 4, and it's an open dot. And we're essentially combining these two. So the area to the left of negative 2 and the area to the right of 4, but not including 4, will be part of the solution set. And that's it. So essentially, x is smaller or equal to negative 2, comma, x is greater than 4 represents the solution set. Then finally over here, our last example. Let's draw a number line for x is smaller than negative 1. We're not including the negative 1 because it's not equal to, right? And x is smaller than that, so I can highlight the area to the left of negative 1. Then I can highlight the area to the right of 5. So I have x here, x there. And now for the solution set, we're looking for the intersection between the two, whatever both of them have in common. And in this case, they have nothing at all in common. So this is the solution set for it. Does that make sense? I hope so. Basically, smaller than negative 1 is part of the first sentence here, which is x is smaller than negative 1, but it's not part of x is greater than 5. So we erase this area, essentially, for our final solution. And for the second sentence, we have x is greater than 5, but that is not in common with the first, because that's essentially not part of the first. So the intersection between them consists of nothing at all. That's it. So now I suggest that you try a few questions yourself, graph a few solution sets for com um, I mean, uh, compound inequalities, and good luck.